Okay, I think we're live, Alan. <laughs> How are you? Yes, very well indeed. How are you? Very well. Great, great to see you yet again. You've been very kind, and um, you know we've we've heard you on I don't know what two, three, four times. I can't remember, but lots of times. It's good to have you back again. Yeah, good to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So, look, welcome everybody um to our customer success thought leadership webinars uh this is obviously our, our april uh event and i'm uh, joined uh, live today by uh, alan for camp director of customer success and growth practice at zeron zeron is a leading global executive search and project recruitment company and as his title suggests alan heads up the customer success and growth practice there so once again uh, a warm welcome to you alan thanks rick Thank you. And indeed, a warm welcome to everybody as uh, uh, as you, you you join up. Just to say that we do have a chat window. Please feel free to type your questions in here. Let me just make sure attendees can chat with everyone. Good, everyone. Good. Okay, so you've got access to that. Let me just put a uh, hi from Rick into the chat window. Feel free to ask any questions you like, as long as they're polite. Uh, and we will pick those out uh, as we move forward. So you're very welcome. In fact, in fact, I insist you do it. It makes it much more interesting for us and for you. You know, if you're thinking of a question, probably others are as well. So you know, don't don't hold back. Uh, or even if if you've got like helpful advice, you know, neither Alan nor I think that we're the only people who who have good ideas. Far from it. You know, we'd love to learn from you as well. So if you've got ideas, you want to respond with your ideas, put it in the chat window by all means. We've got obviously sixty minutes. Uh, our, our topic is uh, the 2023 customer success employment market. Um, but before we really get sort of stuck into that, I'm just going to ask you, because obviously I, we know each other, we've been sort of friends for a little while, but not everybody might know who you are, Alan. So I'm going to ask you, would you mind just introducing yourself uh, and explain you know, what Zeron does and also what your role is at Zeron, please? Absolutely, yeah. So Zeron is an executive search slash recruitment company. We work with investor-backed technology businesses, so large, largely a mix of VC and private equity-backed technology businesses. Some early stage, some late stage, and we partner with them across multiple functions. So GTM, everything, everything that you would see in a business from go-to-market, finance, people, operations. We have a specialist team that support those companies on building out teams across those different areas top down so we do leadership down to team build but mostly on a retained basis um, and my background is 20 plus years in recruitment and the last 14 years working with investor backed technology businesses building out go to market teams and the last eight years pretty much exclusively customer success which must be a fairly, I mean, it must be a rarity. I mean, there can't be too many people with eight years of pretty much dedicated customer success recruitment experience, right? No, it's it, there's, a, there's a few of us knocking around in the UK, okay. um, but only a few. Yeah, probably less than a handful that can. Less than a handful. Yeah. Take, okay. Good. And certainly, you know, whenever I've come to you, you know, you're very knowledgeable on the topic. So I think this is going to be, you know, very interesting to anybody yeah. who's either thinking of starting a career in customer success, but also, of course, of moving on in their CS career. And it's a bit of a funny time, I think, isn't it, at yeah. the moment? But before we talk about right now uh, and turn to like the 2023 uh, subject that is really, you know, the, uh, the the meat of what we're here to discuss. I'd like us just to take a step back, Alan, if that's okay, and take a look at how things have changed generally, really since March 2020, which was when sort of COVID-19 was announced. Yeah. Um, and that really, I think, had a big impact on so many careers, but on uh, the customer success management profession as well. Uh, and that probably st stuck around during what I would describe as the epidemic years, you know, 2020 moving into 2021, and then moving from 21 into 22, that begins the sort of the post-COVID period. So could you just sort of describe, you know, what, what, it, you know, what was happening before all of that? And then how did COVID impact uh, yeah. recruitment and c customer success careers and career progression and then how has that then sort of has it started to come back and what, what's the situation what does it look like so i think if you was to draw a line on a, on a on a page it would go like that okay um, so you know I, th I think the momentum behind cs leading into the pandemic was clearly there it was growing lots of companies yeah. that tried to figure out 
you know, what they were doing with it, realized they needed to have a CS function, but didn't really kind of fully understand how to implement it in their businesses, particularly with early stage companies. Um, you know, there was a, a very quick and prominent downturn across all roles, but actually CS was heavily impacted in March 2020, um, yeah. probably more so than other areas, actually. Um, and you know, perhaps I'll, I'll explain on some of the reasons why I think that was. But yeah, I mean, it was it was it was brutal. I was uh, you know, to say my my inbox and LinkedIn inbox in particular was busy was an understatement. There was a lot of people that you know, found themselves out of work quite quickly. Okay. In CS, it was, it was such a unique situation. I mean, it was really six months where nobody knew what they were. And it was it was so unexpected, right? As well, it was very out of the blue, wasn't it? Just, knee -jerk, knee -jerk reaction, like a meteor. Yeah, it was, and I, and I think where the, the impact was felt was at an individual contributor level, CSM level, more so than leadership. You know, if you've got a team of five, ten CSMs, I think you know it was a reduction in resource rather than a complete wipeout of resource. So you suddenly find like an account density change for um, you know, a CSM managing 10 customers all of a sudden they can you know, manage 15, 20 and deal with it that way. Uh, but there was a definite, you know, definite pretty, pretty sizable fallout across the market. Um, and then hockey stick return in September. Right. So like from March to September, brutal, September mm -hmm. onwards, um, until I would say probably September last year. I, I've never experienced the market like it, quite frankly. Um, right. Incredibly busy. Um, I think what happened was people it accentuated the you know the, the view on CS and the value of actually retaining a customer. Yeah. Uh, if anything, it made people realise actually it brought it home, didn't it? I think to the top team, perhaps particularly. Absolutely. And how important both retention and expansion. Absolutely that. that work for the business. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I agree. It, I agree. It put rocket boosters behind how people viewed CS for sure. And actually, although it's probably one of the areas that felt the pinch more than others in a in the GTM org, um, actually on the other side of that, it was the biggest growth area coming out the back of it. Um, I've just written a report actually, which you know, there's lots of positive sentiment out there, but LinkedIn regularly publish like a, a list of the highest growth yes. roles. And yes. Actually, it's been number one. been in the top five for a few years now. It has, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. But, yeah, particularly after COVID, it was it kind of moved up the charts quite quickly. So, right. and it, that remained the case for you know the market has been busy all the way up until. Yeah, I'm ridiculous. The sort of summer of last year is how I yeah, bubble noticed it myself. Last year, I would say like summer, September time, yeah. in the bubble, and you know, tech layoffs started happening probably six months before that in April. Um, and I think, you know, we're now starting to probably, starting to feel some of that going into this year. So that, you know, heat, okay. the heat has gone out of the market. Um, right. It's far from dead, but you know, the heat has gone out. Okay. I think what's happened is we've actually turned to, to the mean and actually a sensible level of hiring and okay. a level than, than where we were, right. uh, which was at one point four or five client inbounds a day saying, need to hire, need to hire, need to hire. Right. And you know, for, for, for recruitment companies to be turning turning work away is quite unique. Uh, right, yeah, absolutely. Just from a capacity standpoint, it was... Just if you, right. I think it's come back down to a level now that is probably pre-pandemic uh, bubble um, and we're probably in that in that kind of sustainable mode right now. Okay, so it's so you would describe it as being not dissimilar to sort of 2018, 2019 figures then? Yeah. Which were very good. It was good. Yeah, it's good. I, I think everyone's got used to this. You know, if, you, if you're a, mm. my network of customer success leaders, they would have been getting you know, whereas, whereas I was getting four or five inbound, can you help hire? They were probably getting four or five opportunities put in front of them in their inboxes daily okay. and weekly. That's oh. not right now. And I think that's probably people, why people feel the market is dead. It's not dead. It's just right. a, it's a new norm, I would say. So the news, the news is kind of like, you know, in one sense, it, you could say it's bad because it's down. But actually, it's not bad because it's not bad. It's just not as good. Companies are hiring. Companies are hiring. You know, companies are hiring. Okay, you know, I've got a big, big 
network. And, and, and customer success as a profession is expanding, right? 100%. Well, SaaS is okay. expanding. You know, the SaaS spend is still SaaS expanding. is expanding itself anyway. anyway. And obviously, what percentage of customer success comes from SaaS? It's got to be, you know, I don't know, 85, 90%. I don't 95. know. Pretty high. Later on this, actually, Rick, which I'll come on to, and I'll, I'll share the report with do yeah in the next few weeks. Uh, but yeah, it's ninety five percent in SaaS. Ninety five percent, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so SaaS has been now overtaken on prem for software spend. So, um, but yeah, so just by by default, you know, you've got a mix, you've got a rising tide market, and actually one of the you know, one of the yeah you know, we all know. Well, certain people in CS we know that you know most revenue comes post sale, so there's still a, there's still a desire and appetite there to hire. I think what's changed is there are a few changes in perhaps more common to that. I think, um, and it's probably become slightly harder to get a job for a few reasons. I interviewed in this same CS Thought Leaders series. I interviewed Nick Meta. Uh, last month i don't know if you caught it you may have done you may not have done yeah. and i know you're very busy you got the name drop there as well Rick, by the way uh, well, yeah yeah well nick meta ceo of gainsight um yeah so uh, uh, one of the things that i uh, that he said was that because we, we were talking about you know customer success right now in in, in fact customer success in a recession was our was yeah. our conversation topic and he said that we, we we may you know we we was making the point it, maybe we are maybe we're not in a recession that's not the point the point is is what we are in is a period of uncertainty yeah. and i thought that was very well expressed and that that to me really does express what i feel myself and what i see everybody else murmuring about is that it's not so much that i'm actually in a recession right now as i just don't know what the future is going to be like so i'm uncertain i don't want to take on any more risk yeah. So is, does that sort of describe it how you feel as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. risk mitigation. So, and to bring that to life, yes. how that manifests itself in a recruitment process yes. with a far more specific brief from a client. And that, that would be with things like, so I'll give you a really real life example. I'm, I'm running a search for a, a Nordic sustainability um, platform. Okay. And... They specifically target construction and manufacturing customers. Um, they will not look at people that don't have some exposure to those markets. Right. So rather than, you know, previously, they would have looked at people that are you know, operated with very similar CS models. Yeah, and, okay. But then that's also to do, right, with, obviously, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a luxury thing, isn't it? Right? Is If you've got more people to choose from, you can be more choosy, Right. Well, you would think so, but actually, when you when you the, the problems occur, when there actually are there are certain sectors where that's a digital laggard market. There aren't too many CS folks that operate. Well, I mean, obviously, as I said, it's, that only works if there are more people to choose yeah. from that are relevant to your. I mean, if you choose, you know, something that isn't on isn't available, well, then you're still, you know, regardless of how many. Yeah, absolutely. If you're choosing then, something from there. Well, what but, but, but what I mean is, is that the, what what I would think actually is more the driver of this. So I think that's more like. The other way around that's that's because there are more options available they are able to be more choosy but i would say i would say that whereas perhaps during during a boom time they say oh like what what's my, what's my head count this year oh yeah take on another 10 like right? you're not getting that anymore you're getting no 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 you what's my head count this year none come to me and insist that you absolutely have to have someone and justify it to me and grudgingly I will give you that one and when you ne need the next one come and ask again yeah. it's, I, I think that's what we're saying is it's not like oh yeah like we'll do 10 there we'll grow there we'll... no 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 it's like there's got to be a, a, a written documented yeah. this is why we need this extra headcount and this is why it's vital and we can't do without it or we won't do it yeah that's that, that is it so I, I think you know more specific briefs Longer processes, um, perhaps in a few more hurdles to, to jump across. Right. Is this is absolutely the right person. That, yeah. So then that's the second bit there. And is, yeah. So again, it's going back to that. So that, that thing I was saying about uh, uncertainty and risk. Yeah. So where there's already too much risk out there and we're all feeling it, right? We, we, we all suddenly become much more risk averse, right? And then yeah. that means, right, yeah, instead of having like uh, t t two interviews and a, and a, and a quick, couple of testimonials no 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 we're, we're going to be much more thorough we're going to it is it is that that is the okay dynamic. um and you know we're, we're in a fortunate position where everyone 
you know, is top down. So a lot of our relationships originate from the investors, the VCs and the PE companies. And, you know, right. it's a, you know, it gives us a lens on what's happening with, you, know, you follow the money, right? So, right. Um, yeah, the money, the money, the money trail is there's a, there's a lot of capital waiting to be deployed, which is reassuring. So you would expect some yes. to return to the market fairly soon. Uh, and, and by waiting to be deployed, also to an extent having to be deployed, right? E companies for sure. Um, right, because if if you're if you're an investor, you you're not making any money if it's in the bank, right? Yeah, exactly. So, but I think I think yeah, that, that the thing about waiting for value, waiting for the bottom, we're still we're still doing that. So I think that's what's happening. But from a uh, yes. you know, so we're, we're it's going to come back around. We're a year into the tech layoffs now. Started last April, so you would expect generally with the I've been right. through two recessions and they generally are you know, generally we're in a tech recession i think now that's the we're not in a, a macro recession but we are right a, okay yes yes um, that's, a, that's an interesting sort of thought yeah yeah um, and i'm speech. thinking i'm thinking there might be a silver lining also to bit to the more m- more hurdles to jump through to to get the job um, by, by a more thorough recruitment process, it, it, it does perhaps, although it's more onerous to go through, it does mean you're more likely to get the right job. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is that. There is. You're not going to waste your time chasing the wrong job because they're going to discount you more early, focus you in on you as the recruiter are able to focus people in better. There is absolutely that. I think where is, I mean, I'll just encapsulate the whole thing as like everything is just granular. So if you're, you know, we're, we're getting with these searches, we're now looking at not only the domain expertise, we're also looking at you know, do you have experience with certain stakeholders or, or adjacent stakeholders? We're looking at, right. you know, this, you know, the brief I mentioned before, that's managing a high number of fairly high velocity customers. So we're looking for have you worked in a similar CS motion before? Yes. Have you built out scale capability? Because you would probably need to do that in that right. client customer number type environment. So they, the, the breeze again quite technical in nature, whereas before it was, you know, we just need a good CS leader or we need a good CSM. The briefs are getting much more targeted and specific. Um, and then you, you, know, you layer that in with a more thorough interview process. It, ultimately, it does mean that the, the fit is probably slightly closer. And you probably think that the candidates got a better chance of success because they're more closely aligned. But if you're out there looking, I would expect that to cause some frustration for you as well. Yes, sure. yes. This is there's going to be more to do to 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 get uh, yeah to get through more stages. Yeah. Um, okay. And is this I just don't, is this global? I mean, is this is it the yeah. same everywhere? Yeah. So Zero, Zero operates in. Um, so we've got a team in you spread around the US. Headquarters is London, and we've got a team that's spread out across the mirror as well. Um, so, you know, with everywhere but bar APAC, we can give you market view on, and it's a really consistent theme across all markets. So I would say the US has actually been tougher than UK, Europe. And again, I think that that might be because going back to that concept of tech recession yeah. might be a, a bigger thing over there yeah, than, than in Europe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's hit, it's hit those guys really hard, actually. Um, maybe, maybe particularly the like the you know, the San Jose sort of area. Yeah, the big, big the big tech companies in particular. No, it's all yeah. know, the, the percentages on where the layoffs have been. It has hit those guys really, really. Yes, hard. I um, think they've been like head office type layoffs a lot in that. Yeah, yeah. Area, yeah. yeah. And going back to your point, Rick, around uncertainty, you know, kind of uh, you know, the fear in the market and so on. That all stems from that. You keep reading these horror stories around tech layoffs. If you're a founder sat, sat on you know, fresh investment, you are going to think a little bit harder around how to spend that. You're probably going to wow. make it a bit longer. And, and by the way, you could you could maybe employ two or three people in India to what you could employ one person in San Jose. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm wondering whether there's a you know there's a, there's a possibility there of some you know automation and um, you know offshoring. A nice segue into my next point, which was around like themes, I suppose. And, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Please let's move on. To it, that. it was nice, nicely done. It wasn't deliberate, but it actually worked really well. Uh, I think like the scale, the scale CSPs and doing less with more. Um, okay. So let yeah so so let yeah let's come on and talk about the yeah you know, the trends that are impacting customer success careers. So do less with more. Tell me more about that. Yeah. Let's start with that one. Um, so yeah, automation. And digital CS, 
tech touch scale where we're now we're now driving clients to call it digital cs because i think the tech yes. touch is wrong um so you know that is definitely front to mind um, yeah. and particularly in <laughs> actually it were it, in, in Ireland, there is a hotbed of digital and scale CS folk, but not anywhere else across Europe. So that is causing a real bottleneck in the market. That's uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, and that's because that's where a, a lot of product led growth companies are formed, and they're the ones that do it best. Um, or, or headquarters, I should say, rather than um, So that's a big, big trend is around, you know, around how companies automate and adopt digital CS strategies as part of a wider CS strategy, whereas previously it was just aimed at SMB customers. You've got this bank of low volume, uh, sorry, low value, high volume customers, don't know what to do with them. We should do some kind of digital engagement with them or want to any activity. Digital CS is now being viewed as part of a serious part of the overall CS strategy more and more. So is there opportunity there? What what, what would you say if there is? What what you know, how would you describe it? What's the opportunity? opportunity there for the customer or for for a potential candidate you mean sorry i'm looking at it from the candidate's perspective um who who is going to perhaps score well here and say look yeah. i've got the right experience here yeah so you need to bring out experience with tooling any once and any activity yeah if you've been any any exposure to doing webinars you know anything like that at all if you've got any experience with cs ops yeah, all of those skill sets are, are really relevant, but then you kind of weed into that stuff that you might have done earlier in your career with marketing or product marketing or anything like that. We've tended to, we've found really good success actually, and this is why companies have actually struggled to hire these roles directly. There isn't, yeah, you know, there aren't very many dedicated scale digital tech touch CS folk out there. So you have to be creative with how you fill those roles as a client. And actually, the way to do that is to piece together people's overall backgrounds and how they can bring that together into one dedicated role. So if you're a candidate looking to go into that market, by all means reach out to me and happy to jump on a call, but you've got to think about all of the all of the key components that go into making up a really good digital CS person. Right. So if you've had experience either directly in customer success or perhaps actually somewhere else in an organization That's where you've taken what yeah. what like a a professional a customer facing professional team was doing and yeah. automated it yeah and provided online self service tools or you know revenue automated operations. revenue operations you know i come from a revenue operations background where you've worked with tooling and data and and you understand customer success right. speak to alan he's he, he would like to hear from you yeah absolutely yeah even if it's just advice about how you can you, know, you can put the building blocks in place to actually develop your career okay. I, I think that's where the market is headed for sure um there's an increase in roles out there and, and actually a short, you know, shortage of good, well-qualified people. So I think that's an opportunity for people in the market right now. Okay. So um, another opportunity, or well, I say it's an opportunity, I don't know, but one thing, what a trend, right, that I see yeah. is this trend to move towards um, uh, a financial target for the customer success team. Is that something yeah. you're seeing? And is that something that comes up in recruitment then where they're saying, okay, prove to me what you know, what have you sold? What have you what, how much revenue have you managed to bring back for your existing company? Yeah. Are they asking those sorts of questions? Again, you know, what's what's your feeling on that and what's your advice to a, a you know a candidate on on that yeah. side of things? Well I, I posted something on my, my LinkedIn feed at the start of the year and it's actually quite quite eye-opening how many CSMs, CS leaders don't put any tangible numbers on their profile, on their CV. Um, and they're there to deliver outcome. It's still a commercially driven role to deliver outcome for the business. And I think that right. gets missed. Um, clients, you know, more and more, CS teams are being aligned to net revenue retention. And they're being comped on their contribution towards net revenue retention. So uh, NRR, you, you need to know your NRR figures. You need to know your was when I started two years ago and your is now having made some amazing changes personally yeah. yourself. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> to, you, right, and that goes on your resume and gets you the interview, right? Absolutely. And I think, I think it's, still, it's still a situation where, you know, CS qualified leads yeah, people want to work. You know, know about that if you're a CS leader, how you how you've implemented strategies around 
expansion by implementing CSQLs you know, and what your team did to generate those. So the CSM being the opportunity sponsor, and it may well be that they hand off to an account exec or right. account manager. But you know. nevertheless, they they were the ones who spotted that opportunity and, and maybe they wrote, yeah. brought that up in conversation with the client and got yeah. their agreement to meet yeah. person yeah. X to discuss it further. And if, you know, if you're a CS leader, um, you know, a big thing that's been a consistent theme is, you know, a commercial underbelly, knowing how to govern metrics properly, you know, knowing how to, you know, right. how to, how to accurately forecast, forecast and, right. Yeah, spot right. So know the meaning of what you do from from a corporate point of view, right? Don't just do what you do. Understand the meaning of it from yeah. a business person's point of view, because those are the questions. You, you think about the person who's interviewing you; they're not you. Correct. Right? They're not a CSM doing CS. They're not CSMing. Yeah. They probably don't care, yeah. right? What they care is yes, but what will it bring the what will it bring the company back? Yeah. So. so they're looking at a totally different context to doing the, you're, you don't go and talk to them about how well you do the job. Talk about how, how great the results are from you doing a great job. Yeah. And you're, and you're seeing that from a, you know, a reporting line that has been a little bit of a shift back to, in some instances, CS reporting back into CRO. Um, yeah. Tells you, tells you what you need to know. A CRO kind of overall ownership of a revenue engine. CS is a revenue. Absolutely. And, and you know, the, the people operating in there should be fully aware of that. And I think going, going back two years, you know, going back to that trend, I think there was a big shift away from that for a short period of time with CS being about value realization, trying to be impartial, you know, a trusted advisor that's not going to sell to me. And Nothing then, wrong with being a trusted advisor. Absolutely not. And the, the problem, I, you see, you've got to walk a mile in other people's shoes, Alan, I think. And I know you agree with this. You know, and I'm, I'm telling you like you don't. I know you know this. And just for, you know, for, the, for our listeners, is, can you imagine the CFO who at the end of the day has got to sign off on employing yet another person? You know, the biggest cost in any SaaS business is, is, is the salaries. Yeah. And... Um, it's it's a big commitment also especially these days you know there's more law about you it's not so easy to get rid of people you know yeah. you know, once you take it on it's the commitment it's a burden you have to pay them yeah and um, and the question as a cfo is a very reasonable question is right i can see what it costs to hire and employ someone but i can't see what it gives us back in money you know what 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 will we get back from hiring the cs uh, this CSM that you want to hire, another CSM. And if the answer is, oh, well, it will make our our customers will like us more, you know, the CFO won't care. No, they won't. He doesn't want it's got to be measured. To be liked. He's yeah. not there to, or she, my apologies, right? He or she is not there to be liked. They're, they're there to help the company grow and be profitable. And that's their only one of, of those is going to be right now what they're in the phase of, right? They're either trying to be bigger or they're trying to be more profitable uh, yeah. to say you know, one or the other <laughs> yes <laughs> preferably both uh, but nothing else counts so how are you contributing either to growth or profitability so you're either contributing to profitability so that's like talk revenues and money or you're contributing to growth talk about expansion and uh, yeah. advocacy and getting new clients in and uh, you know expanding in that those are the things to, to discuss right yeah, absolutely, and that yeah, that commercial commercial underbelly is a definite trend now. There, uh, I would say yeah, other other trends. I would say it's probably more of a market trend, and perhaps we're getting ahead of ourselves here, actually. But um, yeah, I, I think the opportunity around earlier stage companies is quite apparent as well, right now. Ah, okay. So, um, I think the association with there's always been this thing like you're a bigger company, more secure. I think the last twelve months has proven that's not the case. You know, most of the tech layoffs have come in large tech. The layoffs have been from the large enterprises. I know you know, some of my big clients have had layoffs. Yeah. You know, quite large layoffs in in the thousands, some of them. So you know, yes. overall, not obviously not just in the CS team, but overall. It's two hundred and sixty thousand, I think it is in the US or something. I could be wrong on that one. But um oh. so Actually, like the, the venture capital is starting to slot a little bit earlier stage, but actually, like seed through Series A, some Series B, okay, better. So if you're, you know, if you if you've got that early stage experience that you can bring to the table as well, that's a definite opportunity for you. That's been less than right. Um, and so, and what, and so, what are they looking for? So that's a great point. So, okay, so let's say we're, you know, we're that that we we think that. 
possibly about possibly for us yeah. uh, as someone who's looking for a, either first role or yeah. an ongoing role. So what is going to attract um, that uh, recruiter to to an individual if the role is you know very much early day startup? What are they looking for? Uh, experience, knowing how to deal with ambiguity and uncertainty because you're okay. going into, possibly going into a less mature CS org. So A, can you do the role that we need you to do, which is running a book of customers, but also people that want to get involved in the wider creation. Right. Yes. So it's not for the jobs worth. It's not for the, like, I, 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 I was hired to do this. I'm only doing this. Yeah. Like, like It says it here. I know my, that's not the right sort get, of. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable, I think, is, is what <laughs> going to start okay. out. You've got, you've got to enjoy the fact that you know it, it is perceived as being higher risk you're going to be probably working longer hours you've got you've got to you've got to go into that wholeheartedly and realize what you're getting yourself into. right that's a whole topic but... so if you like variety and if you like creative problem solving yeah. and, and and if you like uh, like maybe a high pressure this has got to be done it's really critical to the business no one's going home this weekend until it gets yeah. done yeah if that's your thing but everyone celebrates lots afterwards because way hey we've yeah. done a fantastic job you know yeah. if you want like meaning in your life that's, as it were right as opposed to right it's five o'clock yeah <laughs> everyone can go that's, home now because it's an enterprise and we'll pick it all up tomorrow and that's absolutely fine and there's nothing wrong with that either by the way because this horse is, of course, at different periods of your someone's life and diff- different things happening in their family life and personal lives that may dictate some of this as well. So, you know, if you want excitement and wild things, go start up or early stage. Um, I would say, I would say, yeah, to so add to that as well, it makes you more more sticky as a person to that business. You have more value to that business, and yeah, you know, that probably gives you a little bit more security then as well. Um, but I think if I were a candidate out there looking at the market at the moment, I'd be I'd be aligning to growth areas like sustainability in the industry, they're big growth areas. Um, if yeah. fintech's up, fintech and payments is holding up really, really well. There's little pockets out there that are doing better than most. I would probably avoid okay. areas like Martech, where there are ten thousand companies vying for the same budget, the same power streams, you've got to find these okay. Companies. Out there um, and that's what we're we're seeing as well there's there's areas out there that are probably under resourced from a cs perspective but high growth from the market and, and, and so just list a few of those out what would you say are the good ones um but definitely sustain anything sustainability sustainability okay that's a big one uh, construction tech okay great that's interesting um yes yeah, it is Supply chain, definitely. Supply chain, yeah. So again, I've got clients. I'm thinking in both of those, yeah, yeah um, who are currently like saying they're taking people on, yeah. Digital transformation, yeah, you can badge that up under digital transformation. Um, but there's loads of different things you can plug into around these around these areas. Um, yes. Yeah, fintech for sure is yeah, particularly fintech. Paper. Okay. Um, those are the ones I'd be gravitating towards at the moment, particularly the sustainability one. We've done medical. Big- not so particularly much. okay yeah a little bit of life sciences but probably yeah, probably off the back of covid that that was like you know the, the, the vc well, obviously were, pharma <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, over that that space and i think that's called a little bit um, yes okay but, yeah i think those those four in particular have probably held up sustainability is one you know that there's tailwinds there there's regulatory change there's lots of happening around that space it's mission and, and is that something that you think has got long legs because obviously if someone's thinking like like, okay, so I'm looking at my career and saying, which direction should I move into? Because not necessarily because it's the hot topic now, but because, but to you know to help me in my career for the next five to ten years, this yeah. would be a good avenue to take. A- sustainability. AI, actually, sorry, I missed one there. Like that's some of the AI. Sorry, I, I spoke over you. What was that? Uh, and artificial intelligence being the other one. AI. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those are the those are the hot hot markets right now, but particularly sustainability. Yeah, I do think that's. For the long term, for sure, I think that's a really interesting area. Lots of easy flow. So sustainability is sustainable. Let's hope so. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. And it's really that's a, dad, that's a dad joke. Uh, my apologies, oh, my everybody. Um, I think the other thing to add into that, what I've noticed as well, there is much more of an appetite for mission-driven businesses, and that's where okay. It's- Play obviously comes in. So you don't want the do it alls. You want the niche. 
they know ex- and they're like they're the absolute experts in it and no one else maybe does it yeah i think i think, I think more so actually like tech for good that's become like mark might have don't want to kind of do with this service to martech but i think you know that that move away from you know trying to sell something to a customer that gets an extra pound note out of somebody has probably become less appealing whereas okay. working with a technology platform that mitigates you know, a construction okay, company. that actually uh, progresses society in some way. Yeah, yeah. So progressive, progressive. Yeah, it's, yeah. Tech, Pro- pro- progressive tech. Progressive tech. But I think that you know those are, those areas are more appealing. Right. Very have, interesting. Very interesting. Probably doing better um, than some of the more traditional routes that you could go down. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's that, that that's 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 really cool. So again, I think you know, again, it's ideas, isn't it, for sort of career career direction. Yeah. Again, going going continuing on with our our trends, and this this I think is quite closely aligned with what you were talking about earlier, where you started with the trend of like scaling. Um, so it's not necessarily exactly an automation, but along the same lines of do do more with less. Yeah. is i think is customer communities yes uh, which doesn't just do more with less it actually adds extra features and functions that you can't yeah. do otherwise but I, I think that that's a massive 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 trend so any thoughts on the on the customer community side of things um i think that's later stage is, is what i'm seeing at the moment i think there's a lot a lot of appetite to yeah, every, the direction i normally get is i would love to do it but I'm not seeing so many companies actually execute on that just yet. I think it's definitely something that will be in people's armory. That's um, interesting. Okay. I think it's this. I, I think certain companies can benefit more than others. I think, as I said earlier, like profit, um, uh, product-led growth companies have been very good at that type of community play. You know, that kind of bottom-up growth engine type customer is a freemium model. They build a community and they. You know, they some of the- yeah, and it does depend. I mean, I think it might be like some customer professions yeah. going to be more chatty, yeah. frankly, than others, right? Some are going to more be like feel like they want to join a community and join in and contribute, and yeah. others are not like well, that anyway. Developer tools is quite a big area as well. Actually, that's right. another area that are probably worth looking at, like DevOps solutions. That's big on community. Yeah. You know, you've got the developers talking to one another and actually growth engines of business. So I think there's pockets out there that have adopted that, um, but not widely, in my opinion. Okay. Because obviously it is very, I mean, from my perspective, I think it is, it, you know, if you can get it right, it is very powerful. But it, it, it is something that I think you've got to invest in and you've got, you've got to, you know, sort of self-drive it for a while before it becomes sort of, you can start to leave the customers to take over as it were you've got to put all the content into the community to make it big enough to attract customers to start contributing themselves so yeah. i think it's a it's you've got a it's a fairly big investment so again perhaps perhaps it is sort of later on than some of the sort of the more earlier round companies think, that you're tending to see and deal with more i think so because it's a long-term play and perhaps the thing isn't quite so long-term at the moment for some of these customers right i think you're going to go and invest that's a good point okay so going back to this you know yeah a period of uncertainty don't want to take too much risk on board right now so that would be like a, a bigger a big bet which we're not we're not taking on big bets right now uh, oh, okay that's interesting okay you know, thank you well, yeah that's very interesting two years to get any real traction with that so you know some companies will be will be speculating on that and will benefit definitely but yeah it's probably, it's probably about immediate financial impact that some companies are going to be looking for so perhaps that's why i'm not seeing it so much okay so on that note, let's turn back to you mentioned earlier CS ops, and I think that that's an important topic. Mm-hmm. So uh, the the concept, obviously, if you're not familiar out there with CS ops or CS operations, is um, if you imagine, let let's say, I just uh, arbitrarily, I'm just going to put some numbers here. Let's say you've got a hundred CSMs, yeah, um, and they're all actually customer facing, so they're all going out there and they all deal with. 10 customers each so you've got a thousand customers and you've got 100 csms and they're so so the idea of cs ops is instead of that you take maybe out of your 100 you take you take five of them and and take them out of that yeah uh, immediate firing line so now you've got another 50 customers you've got to spread that they were dealing with you've got to spread across all the others they have to do more now yeah but 
what the CS ops will do is make life simpler, better, and more productive for your remaining 95 people by organizing them, (laughs) by providing the right framework, by providing uh, the right uh, storyboards, by providing uh, the the right processes, by providing the right tools and templates, uh, by providing the right uh, software systems, by providing the right training, uh, and, and and upskilling and coaching and, and support and in doing all of this perhaps they, they need to be all need to be to, to stay even now you know they've all got to take on another couple of customers which means they've got to be like maybe 10 percent or 20 percent more more productive but you actually end up with them all being 30 or 40 percent more productive so yeah. overall you've you've won massively even though you're actually now paying people to actually themselves not not carry any value at all directly they're adding indirect value through the rest of the team i've probably explained that badly oh, yeah. hopefully uh, you get what i mean yes i do and actually there's a wider there's a wider answer to this because actually the, one of the biggest growth roles in tech right now is revops is which rev revenue, revenue operations it's one of the, the fastest yeah because it's not so easy as it looks is it that all that calculating and you know it's it's proving the, proving the value is not yeah not very easy. And that plays into CSO. So under a rev ops nice. who's there to you know align the, the GTM functions and connect the dots and, and make sure that you know the end to end customer experience is right. Okay. You would have a CSO person reporting, probably partly reporting into them, but also reporting into the CS leader. As well, yeah. so, and I think what's interesting about this, I think, Alan, is that is that it, it gives us uh, like a bit of variety because some people are going to be very very attracted to the customer facing, problem solving, helping people overcome challenges type you know, hand holding type role that is the traditional CSM. But if you're more the person who actually you, you, you like mathematical models or you yeah. like process and you like organizing things and you like yeah. to work out the right way of doing things and getting everything organized, well actually there's a there's a role for you now as well. well actually, there's sort of kind of different appeals maybe to different different personalities. <laughs> I, th- I think in you know businesses where you've got higher custom numbers, um, it, it, with the leadership briefs I've seen and some of the senior CS briefs, there is an underbelly or a need to have some operational rigor rather than just being like commercially customer facing. Just knowing you know knowing how to work with the data, right. and have that operational, particularly with the leadership, I suppose, where you can actually go in and understand the different segments of customers and how to drive you know operational best practice to get more out of what you're doing which is which is why a company i mean i've been looking at this mostly or pretty much entirely from a an individual yeah like, on a on a on a career progression here but turning it around and looking at it from the point of view of a company this is why they should engage with somebody like yourself because the the alternative tends to be to promote from within and the concept then, of course, as everybody knows, is that you you know, you, you promote to the level of incompetence, uh, by which I mean, you know, oh, they're really good. Well, then promote them to the next level. But the ne- if the next level becomes a management level, that's yeah. nothing to do with being really good at doing the job. That's another whole set of different things. Right. And, and, and you've just promoted someone to a, the wrong role that's not right for them. They're not going to – they'll leave. You know, you've not you've actually made it worse because you not only have you not got a good manager you've lost someone who was good at the thing they were doing yeah so any that's thoughts cool. on that um yes I, th- I, th- I think that's part of an evolution of a SaaS business actually you tend to find this key yes you need to you need, we all need to be hands-on doers of it at first right um, you know you, um, with cs you know being closer to the product and in the week <laughs> the product sub 10 million ARR. that's very very common right. working yeah you know, working product team you know once you've got product market fit you get through 10 million you know lots of changes and that's generally where you'll see somebody or a company transition and actually upskill their whole cs piece they'll actually put a new leader in place and start so to- moving from somebody who has a career in customer success to somebody who has a career in custom in managing customer success yeah you know, you and, and you call it i suppose like a thoroughbred proven leader that can come in and take you from 10 million up to 50 million wherever it is you're trying to get to you know that's quite that's a really key inflection point is that 10 million ARR so it's generally linked to generally linked to revenue or a funding stage so companies that have had their series a 
yeah, they've got a timeline in place to get to series B. That's quite often the point they'll reflect on what their CS function looks like. Right. It's not about have we got the necessary, necessary people internally? No, we haven't. We need to go out to market and actually bring in somebody that's got you know, 10 years plus experience or five years plus experience doing it. So it sounds to me like, again, looking at this from the corporate point of view now, rather than from the in individual looking for a career, yeah. is um, if we are, a, if it's a startup SaaS company, your first hiring customer success may not be a C-level exec or a VP <laughs> level customer success manager who is expecting to be like purely academic in terms of like I, I work out how to do it and I strategize how to do it and then I have a team who actually does it for me and I'm and I you know they're not going to have a team right because they're the first hire so it's someone else so who who's the first hire yeah that's a good question um it'll be the perfect time we've just done one of these actually is somebody that's perhaps got some team lead experience somewhere else chomping at the bit to take on Ownership. So they've they've hired they've 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 been part of the hiring process before they've hired helped to hire people they've had been part they've managed and coached uh, they've had some direct reports direct to reports. them but they haven't necessarily been yeah you know a senior leader in anything they've been more like a team leader I've seen what good looks like by working with a senior leader um, and you know, want to you know, want that opportunity to to own the, own the strategy own the budget own the playbook own the team. Um, that's what good looks like, but still player coach, very much player coach, can scale the function at the right time, transition away from being player coach to being head off. But they, you know, they might carry that head of CS title in the near term, regardless. So that, they might be at the top of senior customer success manager, moving into their first director of customer success role. Yeah. Am I getting that right? Okay. Yeah. Direct. I mean, titles are a Title, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, they're, 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 you know, what's what it's a rose by any other name. Head of quite often. Yeah, it's probably what you like, but yeah. But yeah, that, that would be the perfect hire for that stage of business, for sure. Okay. You go for a full on. And then are, are, they, are, they going to, are they going to grow into that next role or are they going to find somebody hired above them in three Eventually. years' time? Possibly. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. That, that's a lot on the individual and how quickly you know, they might be super talented, super smart, and they're, you know, they're on a high growth journey and they're, they're perfect. But there is also the, the possibility that they reach a level and the company... Yeah, a, a comfort level, competence level. Yeah, competence level, and then you know, the company reach, reaches that key revenue marker. Or uh, well, and, and maybe they actually, like going back to what I said, there's pressure on them. Hire someone who's been there and done that. We want someone who, who's got on their resume now... The 50 million yeah and it could be that they've worked you know there's quite often a requirement come, you know, come in and report to the ceo someone that's worked with the investors before you know those are things that are quite often on the agenda for, for companies that are having a stage of growth so you, yeah it's, it's quite possible that you'll get somebody to you know, come in and, and sit above you if it's a really high growth business that's more likely because you're, you're yes. going to have somebody yeah you know, somebody that can manage an org of 20 30 40 people you won't have that in your locker and you need, you know, the company might need somebody who can actually come in and do that and organise a, a big team of people and a big budget. So are there any trends that we have not discussed that we ought to mention that you are seeing right now? Um, Talked about quite a few, haven't we, Alan? Yeah, we have. I think, I think for me, it's more market trends and going back to something that we touched on around you know, finding... You're seeing businesses reassuringly having CS front of mind very early in their journey in those growth areas like sustainability. You know, we're having lots of conversations with sustainability companies that just had investment. You know, we're talking to them about their priority hires and CS is front of mind for them. So, you know, the, the advice to anybody out there looking is think about don't just yeah, if you're planning and you're looking at roles out there, you might want to go a little bit deeper and think about key key areas to identify where you can actually approach some companies directly, where there's a rising tide. Yeah, go, you go follow the money, yeah, yeah. And money yeah. into those into those growth markets. So I think oh, I think right. a big one for me. 
So actually, one of the questions that I had for you, and maybe we'll, we'll move to it, is I was going to ask you, what are your top five tips that you recommend to someone who perhaps is looking for either their next role or maybe yeah. even their first role in customer success? And I think I think that kind of could could be yeah. one of those tips, right, is, you know, don't don't sit and wait for things to come to you. you you've got to go out there and do your research, find find an area where they, there's growth yeah. happening and right, right to the businesses you'd quite like to be employed by and, and offer yourself to them, right? If, you, if you're, if you're going to, it's pretty clear if you're out there applying for roles on LinkedIn, you're going to look at those job ads and see hundreds of applications. Uh, most of those won't be right, just to offer some, some reassurance there. But uh, yeah, I think, I think you've got to try and try and stand out from the crowd in some way. So I think hey, being proactive is a big part of that. Engage with all the, all of the communities and thought leaders and you know, get proactive and have a presence on social media, upskill. Yeah, can, up can we talk about that a bit more? Because I think that's almost like, a, to me, it's like another thing. Another tip would be you know, social media presence. Because I know when I've talked to some hiring managers, yeah. uh, you know, VPs of customer success, in other words, they tell me they actually, they don't, they, they look on LinkedIn before they even read the resume yeah. you know, or, or uh, before or over and above what's in the re resume, regardless of the order they do it in, they pay more attention. And the reason they say for, for that is because you can't make it up on LinkedIn, you know, and, and, and just create a fictitious last five years. You've yeah. got to have been doing it for the last five years for you to have that history on LinkedIn. Whereas the resume can say anything you want it to say. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> def def definitely the case. But I think also you can see how engaged you are with your profession. Right. You know, if you're engaging with communities, you're engaging with people on there, you're contributing. You know, you might not be the best you know, content writer in the world, but you can certainly comment on somebody else's piece. Which uh, may or may not be important, depending upon what role you're yeah. uh, interviewing yeah. for, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think just, I would always say to everybody, you know, do a, do a, some shop, some, some housekeeping on your, your social media footprint. Look at your profile. If you're an experienced DSM, make sure there's something on there around outcomes that you've personally owned and driven. Going back to that commercial piece, you know, whether it be yeah. financial outcome, or, you know, try not to make it too operationally focused. Perhaps I, I implemented another piece of software, but try and you know, try and have something on there that's tangible and measurable from an impact perspective. Um, so again, walk a mile in the shoes of the hiring manager. If you were the hiring manager, what would you like to see from yeah. a potential candidates LinkedIn? What would you like to go and say? Oh, well, that this guy looks great, or this lady looks great, or whoever it is, this person looks wonderful. I'd, I'd like to interview them. Yeah. What would you want in their LinkedIn? The, yeah, you know, the, some activity links to maybe people that they are linked to as well. Yeah. Um, recommendations. And, recommendations i think people, people recommendations you know intelligent observations and comments on you yeah. know on trends so you can see that they're they're up to date they understand the current situation okay. just make sure it's up to date as well you know make sure you, you keep job. it up to date it doesn't need to be rocky you don't need to be like you know the number one top contributor on linkedin because also if, you, if you're on linkedin every five minutes the, the question there is where you know are you how much right. work you do i was going to so. come, come on to that there is there is the opposite side of that coin which is right. exactly that you know you, yeah. uh, you don't want to be sat comes on LinkedIn all day every day just commenting on other people's work and how great they are because that, that will raise a question mark in itself um that has yeah. come up recently with with uh, a couple of searches so I do I do think you've got to be present you know and out there and visual with you know the people that matter in the space I would say um so that that would be something I would do as a you know that and just making sure the content on there is commercial. I would definitely do that. Think about your markets, which we've touched on. Think about okay, where yeah. you go. Um, upskilling. There's only training you can do. Is anything you can do in your own time, dedicate time, resource, right. commit to. So there's that. There's that famous interview question of, well, what, you know, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? So you can forestall that by like thinking to yourself well what are my weaknesses right yeah. well, let's do something about it now so it isn't one and then you've got the ideal answer to that question when it comes up so what are your strengths and weaknesses well i did have a weakness actually which was this but you know what i did i went out and did some training on it yeah it's a great it's a growth mindset thing as well you know the, the particular startups and early stage businesses growth mindset lifelong learning they're all things that you know founders love leaders love and if you show that you're a, right 
I, 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 I'm, I'm keen to absorb new things. I'm keen to explore new opportunities. I'm willing to be agile and flexible. Yeah. Um, what's that expression that you used? Lifelong learning, growth mindset, which one? I forget now. You said it earlier. It's a, w- a word you use to describe what happens in a in a small business that I thought was great. But well, anyway, ambiguity. Exactly. Ambiguity. That was it. Yeah. Embrace. <laughs> embrace ambiguity. Yeah, I think I, that's a great. A great thing to have on your CV if you go or your LinkedIn if you're going for a for a startup world for sure. But I think yeah. that's just being a good professional. I think if, if you're applying for roles, don't just rely on hitting the apply now button on LinkedIn. You know, go go direct. Figure out who the hiring manager is. Send them a note. Try and make you, you know, do something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. You know, personalised outreach. So stand out somehow. Stand out. Go and and one way to stand, as you say, is rather than just go through the the, the correct hiring process, do that. Yeah. But then also send them a little. By the way, I've I've submitted my my resume, and I, I see we're on LinkedIn and we're we're a LinkedIn connection. Uh-huh. I thought, yeah. or or someone else was, and I've asked them to introduce me to you because I I'm just keen just to just to say that I I, I I really would love the opportunity to get get an interview in this role. If there's anything you'd like to know about me, you know, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, you know, I look forward to hearing from you. All. You know, something of that nature that's just right. going to you know, push, the, push them push them okay yeah let's give them a chance sorry yes go ahead alan last, last, two minutes. last thoughts what you you know give me is there anything that we haven't said that we ought to um i think we've, we've covered lots right um yeah we have i think i think that's about it i think yeah for, for me just that last point about standing out if you want to take that on a stage and personalize some outreach around you know, showing that you've already researched the company and just outlining a few reasons why it's really interesting. You know, right. you can drop that in, you know, oh, yeah, I'd love to chat. I can see you're doing X, Y, and Z in the market. That, yes. you know, that particularly well to what I've done here. Um, you know, anything personalised, it shows you've gone out of your way to research that, that particular customer, that particular individual. You know, and, that- and I think we covered this earlier, but just to be clear, in your resume, don't put... Well, do put what you did, but don't just put "I did this." Put yeah. the results. Yeah. So I, I did this, leading to a fifteen percent increase in that over this period, leading to X amount more revenues or whatever. But put the the value return to the business don't of what you do. Don't just put what you do. Put what the result was. And and what I did, not what we did. That's the common right. thing people do is talk too much about the collective, which which right. in one sense, but you want to you know, get. Yeah. Uh, your impact and you need to really focus yeah. on your, on your, you know, your so I, I led the transition from x to y yeah. leading to an yeah. increase of this that and the other absolutely and as ever, it's been a, a joy talking to you. We could go on longer. Um, thank you so, so much for giving up your time. We really do appreciate it. I hope it's been useful. We haven't had any questions from anybody. So, uh, well, you know, I hope it's been useful, though, anyway. And um, uh, the recording will be shared. And um, we really appreciate your time. Thank you so thank much. You. For everyone else, thank you for attending. And we'll be back next month uh, for another session in our CS Thought Leadership. But for now, that's it, though. So uh, from me and from Alan, thank you very much indeed, and good night to you. See you, Alan.